I'm going to get back to that story, Shunny. Just, just you listen to Boomer Great One. He's going to tell you about how it was back in the olden days, back, back before fire, back when we walked uphill for everything. In fact, we didn't even have a concept of downhill because there was no downhill. Everything was uphill. We thought that was normal. We didn't even have a word for it because there was no alternative. It was uphill all the time. You just need to to reach down and and grab yourselves by your bootstraps and and pull yourselves up, shunny. Because when I was your age, I bought a house for $25,000. And I made that money on my paper route and bussing tables at the local cafe. And if I could do it, you can do it too. You just need to to reach down and pull yourself up and, and just Buckle up, buckle up there, buckaroo. God, I hate boomers. So I was road tripping, and I have not road tripped in a long time, and I forgot that when I road trip, I come up with ideas. I used to write it down on a sheet of paper, and instead now I take out my cell phone and highly illegally and dangerously type things into the phone notepad, and okay, there's my genius thing for forever. That's that's how I That's how asshole consulting was formed. Anyway, so I was driving, and then it's just some of these simple ones and geared at a higher ratio of the oh, more eccentric art, uh, arguments. Oh, look at the, the details. Of what, what are the, the finessed points of it? And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's go back to Economics 101. And I wanted to point out something very simple, very black and white, like the thumbnail. Uh, a lot of you youngins, and by youngins, I mean anyone under 50, including myself. A lot of you are rightfully complaining about the cost of housing, whether that's buying a house or whether it's renting, the, the price of lodging, whether you own or rent. And you're 100% right. It, the costs have gotten so high that I've done a 180 on a position I used to take, was quite proud of, where in the past I was adamant, I was emphatic that uh, – a real man, a real woman would support themselves and not only not live at home, but wouldn't take a subsidy from mom and dad. Because <clears throat> many, many, Gen I know you think Gen X is really cool. Like, oh my God, they're so edgy and they're not all morbidly obese. And some of them don't have tattoos. Uh, you think well, they're pretty awesome. They're not. Uh, the very common trick among Gen X was to claim strong, independent man, woman didn't matter. Meanwhile, mom and dad would be subsidizing your apartment. Mom and dad would be paying for your utilities. Mom and dad, very common, would buy you a car or pay for your car outright. And you know, oh, well, there's a, no, no, no. It, it, they were still dependent. <clears throat> but it was possible in the day that you could be an independent person and afford your own housing. Now, uh, in part because of low interest rates, which then switched to high interest rates, which then locked everyone out of housing because ain't nobody selling because they want to keep their 2.2% interest rate. Um, that has <clears throat> dramatically increased and then limited the supply of housing that's available and therefore uh, drove rents up to points where I'm like, no, it's not worth it. it, it if you were to go out and actually be, pay for your own apartment right now as a young 18 or 19 year old, the $1,500, $2,000 a month would just cripple you financially for the rest of your life. And as I have talked about many times before, whatever young person should be doing today, <clears throat> if they have parents who are kind enough to do so, I strongly recommend that you stay at home. You go to school online. If you're doing college online, you get a trade, et cetera, et cetera, but you do not pay rent because that's absurd. And if you throw that money and an average returning mutual fund over the past four years, you'll have somewhere. Oh, and work two full-time jobs. <clears throat> There's the work part. By the way, kids, just living at home doesn't make you wealthy. There's this whole work aspect. But if you hustled and bustled and you work two full-time jobs, which would suck for four years, but you're going to piss away in college anyway for some joke of a liberal arts degree, and you socked it away, you'd have somewhere between $150,000 to $200,000 a year. And oh, by God, by golly, here comes well-endowed Molly. <clears throat> you would either, if you've kept it in the S&P 500 or a diversified portfolio, not only would you not have to worry about retirement, or you could pivot that money 
and uh, put a very hefty down payment on a house and therefore you could afford housing. I know people like to complain they don't want solutions. I just gave you solutions so we won't focus on that. And I'll just, we'll just, <laughs> the solution went away again. <clears throat> work, I don't wanna work. Okay, never mind. enjoy living at home forever. <clears throat> um, but I did, I switched my, my opinion on that because yeah, it's not worth it paying rent. Absolutely not. However, there was one other thing that I want to point out, especially to you youngins, because you know everything and you listen to your teachers who, and your professors who, man, the millennials followed all their advice and look where they ended up. Oh, I'm sure. Just double down on it. <clears throat> you just didn't boomer advice enough. You, you didn't, you didn't, oh, he didn't do the 23 skidoo at the end. Oh, you got, you took all the boomer advice. You did everything you were told. You got good grades. You, uh, and went to college, you followed your heart. And the only reason the money didn't fall is because you knew, say, 23 skidoo at the end of graduation. If you said that, you would have gone, ah, but you didn't. And it's too late. You can only say it the day of graduation. So there's your $200,000 for your worthless law degree. <clears throat> anyway, back to housing. A very simple thing because you kids know everything and, and you know that Democrats, I am going to be political here, not because I'm pro Republican, but I'm, it's not even that I'm anti Democrats. The policy is just, fuck you all in the ass just fucks you all up and you all don't realize it <clears throat> do the democrats put like heroin gel on the dildo when they fuck you in the ass you're like oh my god it feels so good is that why you're not realizing you're getting fucked in the ass just one i don't know does it feel good to get fucked in the ass i've never been fucked in the ass i don't know <clears throat> anyway uh i was sitting there thinking about how the vast majority of young people vote left uh but that's that's, you know, young and stupid. If you don't vote left when you're young, you have no heart. If you don't vote conservative when you're old, you have no brain. <clears throat> so the saying goes. But of the many reasons, the many reasons that you can't afford housing, you do know allowing immigrants, legal or not, I'm, I'm not even discerning uh, uh, on that one. It's just allowing more people into the country drives up do you i know you all went to college do you remember economics 101 supply and demand or was that a was that a, a construct of the patriarchy <clears throat> but whereas interest rates uh low interest rates drove demand up drove prices up um whereas the housing crash of 2007 to 2008 <clears throat> that there was a there was an overbuild of housing uh, and the, the, that, that market crashed and then the inventory slowly whittled down, but then the new housing starts that crash wiped out a ton of contractors and carpenters. So the long-term average of new housing starts has been below. And I, I'd have to get the numbers again, <clears throat> but if they had just kept up the building rates from say the seventies to before the housing bubble, say 2002, 2003, if they just kept that stable, we would have had 5 million more units of housing, S several million more units of housing that would, but uh, a lot of tradesmen dropped out after that. And you all got your degrees in butt plug studies and like, oh, oh my God, I'm going to be an English major, you know, completely. I mean, I'm not slamming on you. I'm describing you completely worthless, talentless people who have nothing to offer the economy or society. So we got a ton of DEI college graduates, but no one could fix the roof. <clears throat> uh, so there's a shortage of housing there. So that's another reason prices are high. But then there's this thing called demand. And when there are more people, no matter who they are, they got to be housed somewhere. And I'm, I'm one, I know, <clears throat> Cappy, you're going to bang your head against the wall. I'm, I'm going to, but I'm just going to put this up for posterity. In anywhere in your K through college education, in anywhere in your post-college education, AKA the real world, did you ever make the connection between choices and consequences, decisions and consequences? Have you, <clears throat> if you take a hammer and you hit your hand, it hurts. I think you got that one. But do you understand in voting in Democrats in, in this particular country, other countries, a different political party, and not specifically the Democrats, but <clears throat> here are the Democrats, where they've allowed for open borders and now millions of other people are coming in. Do you understand that among all the other variables I mentioned, this too? contributes to the cost of housing going up. You understand that? <clears throat> Maybe they're not occupying the McMansions or whatever, 
But if you're young and poor and just starting out, they are also immigrants and poor and just starting out. And you're all going to be gunning for the same housing, you know, one bedroom, a studio, something small. I mean, back in my day, we had a one bedroom and me, two guys lived in it, you know, so it, we were there. <clears throat> it, do you make that connection? They're taking, and, but the, which my, my larger point is it prices you out of the, the lower affordable housing. Uh, this also, again, Democrat policy, you, you may be too young to remember cash for clunkers. Um, <clears throat> aside from housing, cars are usually the second or third most expensive thing in your life. Education and there's so more depending how long you go and waste your time. Right? And they, the whole idea was to save the environment. They would take perfectly functional used cars. They would destroy the engine by pouring some kind of um, liquid into the engine. You couldn't use them anymore. <clears throat> and you get some kind of discount to get a newer more fuel efficient, environmentally friendly. All you did, and I don't know how many millions of cars were destroyed for cash for clunkers, but surprise, guess what? I, now, I could be wrong, boys and girls, unless you use my patented way to buy a used car, which you can find in my book link below, Bachelor Pad Economics, an entire chapter on cars. You can still find affordable cars. It's hard, but you can find them. But has the price of used cars gone up or down since those days? And has that increased or decreased your standard of living? And it's, I'm fascinated on a psychological level how young people in particular, but leftists in general, you will keep voting for policies that just fuck you over, that really hurt you. I don't know if it's ego or pride. You can't admit you were wrong. Or maybe you just are detested with the Republican Party. That I can understand. I'm no big fan of Trump myself. right? <clears throat> but from a policy standpoint, are you, here's another. Here's a third explanation. You have nothing else going on in your life that your politics is all that matters and leftist politics because yet you know that was prescribed to you. You know you're not being independent or edgy. You know your teachers told you to do that. Your professors told you to do that. The media told you to do that. You know that's not edgy. <clears throat> it's like a tattoo. It's conformist. Ooh, zany. You got blue hair. Oh, girlfriend, you're so unique. Tell me more about Sylvia Plath. But I, cars, housing, education, going up in price. So what? You could be popular. You could be politically popular. You sac here's here's the takeaway from this. You sacrificed home ownership so that you could be politically popular, whether to be accepted with your friends or deep down inside, like I'm a worthless sack of shit. I got nothing else. I'm gonna cheer on the little guy. Why do you vote policies that fucking destroy the little guy? Then why do you vote for that part? Again, not saying the Republicans are you know the the party of the poor. <clears throat> not saying that, although it used to be the Republicans were the trust fund baby party and the Democrats were the workers party. Now the Democrats are the trust fund party and the Republicans are just, I don't know, a bunch of idiotic dopes that can't do anything right, apparently. Although I guess they don't have a voting mandate because you're like, oh my God, more Democrat, please. Why is housing so expensive? And of the many policies, I think some of which <clears throat> Republicans had handed, you do know, you do know that having more people here drives up the price of housing, drives up the price of everything. Are groceries more expensive? I heard they're more expensive. How many of you are going to major in farm stuff or agriculture? You guys, I mean, you could become from, oh no, but you guys got yourself a social work degree. I hear yeah, I'll solve the problem. <clears throat> I, I'm just wondering can you make that connection? And better, a better question would be, is can you get over your ego for your, the sake of your own future to set aside your pride and ego and say, yeah, I was wrong. Not that you're going to go become a card carrying Republican. I'm not, I mean, yeah, go ahead. I guess it's the other party in town. But do, when does, how much does your life got to suck? That you say, hey, wait a second, my life is so bad, I'm almost going to sit down and think about what choices I've made on the political sphere, in the governance sphere. What policies did I vote for? We are in a democracy that might have caused this. 
Interest rates, not your responsibility. Federal Reserve, which technically not really is mortgage rates and not the <clears throat> federal front rate. Don't mean to bore you people. Uh, but the immigration thing, I, I don't know. Oh, my God, traffic. Really? Yeah, traffic's bad, huh? Oh, wow. Well, I, wonder, I wonder, did you vote for more welfare or more roads? Oh, no, you voted for bicycle lanes and hive lanes that no one uses and choo-choo trains that no one rides. I... I'm it's it really is I look I'm in the last third of my life I I'm inoculated I got my insurance I don't care anymore I don't have kids I don't have to worry about the future at all I am just fascinated with the lack of self-awareness and is it stupidity you don't make this connection I, I you gave up you're not homeless that you know you're living with mom and dad or you're living on a subsidy or you're living a lot smaller house than what you're doing. But you essentially gave up the American dream, classic as it, you may not want the American dream, but you gave up home ownership so you could be popular and edgy at little house parties in your 20s or at the college campus. Did you want to have affordable housing? Did you want to have affordable rent? I And another one we haven't talked about, just to show you it's policy, generally left, it's not always, but generally... <laughs> Oh my God, the environment, we can't, we can't approve new housing. We can't approve new, we need rent controls. Do you know how rent, did you take economics 101? Go look how rent controls, what effect that has on the supply of housing and therefore the price. <clears throat> and so I just want to throw it where, where is the cost of housing, the cost of lodging and rent usually has a financial focus. I want you to focus on this one other political focus, political variable in this particular case, immigration. And not so much to address why housing is expensive. No one gives a shit. You just want to bitch about it. No one's going to do anything about it. But to get you to think, do you think, wait a second, if uh, it, it's my voting having an effect on government policy and and then the policies in that, or this isn't even a policy, this is just another failure to protect the borders of a country. <clears throat> and then you did, huh? Huh? I, I, I want to know the comments, please. In the comments, I, I'm fascinated. And I, I want to hear the, uh, it would be entertaining for a while, but the, oh, you fascist pig. Okay, fine, call me names, but please answer my question at the same time. Do you make the, do you understand? Is there some ulterior reason we should just let everyone into the country and then not expect housing to go up? I'll give one thing. One thing I will say about, well, disproportionately the Latinos, I don't know about other. They they do ameliorate the housing problem in that they disproportionately build housing, which is more than can be said for all you college graduates from the you know the lily white suburbs. Oh my goodness, it's just gonna go and I'm gonna be a therapist and then I'm gonna work in DEI marketing. And why is plumbing so expensive? What do you mean I need to replace my roof? <clears throat> What's a timing belt? I will give it, you know, go. <laughs> I'd be curious what percentage of the roofs have been touched by Latino hands. But the ones the ones being constructed today, I want to be, I, it's got to be half, at least half. So at least they're doing their part, I guess. <clears throat> but it's just, I, well, I, I, it's up to you guys. Anyway, if you're having financial troubles, you want to learn how to afford affordable cars and housing, link below is a book called Bachelor Pad Economics. Oh, I got to read? Yeah, you got to read. Oh, no. Now go play some more video games and, and complain on the internet about how Ronald Reagan or Donald Trump caused housing prices to go up. Oh, you know, dude, that'll, that'll start building condos for everyone to live in. All right, let's go to the Super Chats. Dre, but Cappy, not everyone can be like you, Carlson alumni. Everyone, everyone will have to be. See, that's the thing. People think, well, we can't all be farmers. You're going to have to be soon enough. We can't all be carpenters. You're going to have to be. We can't all be what uh, we can't. It, it's always we can't all be hard, difficult thing. It's never we can't all be beer tasters. We can't all be chocolate connoisseurs. It's always, oh, we can't all be insert job that requires math here. We can't all be engineers. We can't all be mechanics. Yeah, but you don't all have to be fucking elementary school teachers either. Chesington, 55 Turkish Lira. 
T-R-Y, am I right? Five bucks, uh, 55 Turkish Lira. Hawaii was a warning sign everyone ignored. Uh, what was a lot of like back in the day, people were always moving there. Florida's kind of any, any market that's hot. Florida housing and all the other costs are going up. And there, that's more, um, that's more interstate movement. People are moving from cold shit, Democrat, Marxist crap hole, New York, and going down to Florida. And I, I was just hanging out with Chris Muir not too long ago, <clears throat> and he moved out of Florida. And uh, he's like, yeah, things are a third the price here than they were in Florida. Because a lot of people, Florida did triple its production of stuff. It just triple its housing supply. Yeah, things are going to get more expensive. They're going to be trapped. Did you triple the amount of roads? I'll be a triple the amount of welfare, I bet. <clears throat> Nonstop Drake, two bucks. At least migrates, migrate, immigrants. Uh, I think even migraines. Migrants probably have blue cars. Yeah, that was my point. I mean, it, much as I don't want illegal aliens to be here, there's no designing, uh, there's no denying, no denying that the guys roofing or whatever, uh, some kind of trades, the Latinos or any immigrant doing some kind of trade, legal or not, are producing way more real GDP than Becky and her fucking social science degree. Absolutely no doubt about that. <clears throat> Mine's, mine's more like we don't have the infrastructural capacity to take in any more people. Canada's got it way worse. Their housing situation is way worse. Just can't have enough immigrants. And, and then I get, I don't know, I haven't talked to a lot, of, a lot of immigrants, legal or not, but they're coming here usually with some kids in tow because it's like, there's your problem. It's not where you're from. No, crossing this line in the dirt will not help you. You had too many kids than you could afford. <clears throat> I can't imagine it's easy for them to come here. I, Lord knows what the work stat is. Go and try and find jobs, especially in leftist shitholes. I, it, it's like, okay, I guess. And, the, and here's another thing. What? That's going to depress wages for the immigrants that are already here or any poor American who wants to get into entry-level general labor positions. You poor people just fucked you. That's another. I didn't even thought about that. You depressed wages for entry level shit that you could get and start. I I just I just don't get it. I just I are you I, maybe maybe I'm expecting too. I'm really being serious. I'm expecting too much intelligence on the part of these people. They don't think a step or two ahead. I did write the book Curse of the High IQ. I guess I should remember that two standard deviations below me is a normal person, but two standard deviations below them is like someone who's genuinely mentally impaired to the point they can't wipe their own ass. So I guess I'm expecting too much of the normal people to figure this shit out. Uh, J-Man the Dude, 10 bucks. I'm getting a master's in accounting. I have a bachelor's in psychology. My school wants me to get an MBA to sit for the CPA exam. I'm going to skip the MBA and get my enrolled agent certification. Yeah, well, get a master's in accounting. Uh, that should allow you to sit for it, I'd imagine. Um, and then if your state, um, your school, like it depends on the state, find a state that will let you sit for the exam after you get your master's in accounting. Don't get the, just go for your enrolled agent. You don't, you don't need to, you just fuck these people. Oh, geez, boomers requiring more education, so you might have the permission to work. <laughs> the kids these days don't want to work. Have to go to fucking school until you're a quarter century old. Fuck off. There's not enough money for the social securities. Oh, that's too bad, Herman. Morbidly obese. Two bucks. But but building a house will get my hands dirty. Exactly. Exactly. I want to see how, it's not necessarily poor, but how much of a lower standard of living the current generation of, let's just say, under 30-somethings are going to sustain so they don't have to dirty their hands, so they don't have to build calluses, so if they, learn, they don't have to learn to code, they don't have to do math. How long will they stay at home? I mean, you still got millennials, a lot of them staying at home. I think in a world without men is something, was it a third of men? Not, not 18 to 24, 25 to 34, something like a third of men still live at home? Oh, sexy Democrats, right, ladies? You girls got your sexy Democrats now. You know, Yaden lives at home and he has his music therapy degree. He can't work and you got to pick him up because he doesn't have his driver's license, but he could strum a real nice sweet song on his acoustic guitar. 
Justify Bisegany, two bucks. Tempted to live at parents to save money. I don't think justified. Aren't you trying to save up? You're going to school so you get your accounting career, right? And then you're saving up money so you could go buy your place down in Mexico. What if you can live at home justified? I would. I absolutely would. If if your parents are kind enough to allow you to maybe toss them a couple bucks. But your goal is to get that fucking piece of property and get the fuck out of here and just do accounting from a beach. Remember, my room, big windows facing the Pacific, okay? And if you could, just put Cappy's room, you know, like some kind of signage to keep all the, the commoners out. I'd appreciate it very much. Thomas Rao, 10 bucks. Cappy going to Vegas in a couple weeks. Any hiking suggestions? Ten, five to 10 mile hikes. Moderate difficulty level <clears throat> within 45 minutes, an hour of the strip that are under the radar. Less crowds. Oof. Oof. Okay. Five to 10 miles. Um, I would do. Okay. Don't go on the weekends. And if you do go on the weekends, go early. I'm talking six, 7 a.m. Early. Like you're at the trailhead at 7 a.m. You'll avoid the, the crowds. But if you go on the weekdays, you should be better off weekends though. You got to start early. Um, I would say, um, <clears throat> black peak, black mountain. Uh, that is not a beautiful hike, but it's a, it's a good, difficult hike. And you get a spectacular view of Vegas, Lake Mead, the other, you can see into California. I, I would do that just for the view. Uh, it's pretty easy up until the last half a mile. And then it gets pretty brutal. Um, my favorite hike in the entire Vegas area is gold, uh, gold strike. That one you can't do on the weekend because the fucking tourists, you got to be there at 7 AM and that thing is out by the Hoover dam. So you got a little bit of a drive to get there. Uh, it's about 45 minutes away. So it's, it's on, on that get there early, be prepared to scale and climb a little bit with rope. You don't have to bring your rope. The ropes are already there. You want to get there before every fat bloated dumbass pig gets there, breaks their leg. They always break a leg. And then there's a line. And you're not going to get down and back up. And now that I think about it, you got to, especially on the weekend, you got to be back up that thing before all the fucking sheep come down. It's a traffic jam. So that one I would almost do on the weekdays and make sure you're there at 7 a.m. And then you, you get down, you look at the Colorado River, take a picture of Arizona, and then get the fuck back up before all the fat touristy pigs honk up every choke point and rappelling station. Um, there are several. There's Oak Creek Hike. Uh, I would avoid Red Rock. Avoid Red Rock Park, but the monument, mon National Monument. Avoid Red Rock National Monument. You got to get a registration. You got to pay. And you see me. And okay. No, fuck it. Just fuck it. All right. You want to go to Calico Basin and hike around Craft Mountain. That's only three and a half miles, but it's a fun one. Uh, but then if you if you're coming in on Charleston, uh, meaning you're going west, you'll go past the entrance for Calico Basin. Um, you'll go past Red Rock. You'll go past the exit for Red Rock. And then once that road turns south, there are like three hiking trails. It's like White Owl. And first creek, second creek, something like that. There's three of them. And you could just hike up into those. And those are fun. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you want to do five to ten. It uh you're gonna have to go see there's a there's some good five to ten in, in Red Rock Canyon, but you just you you have to get a res, it's a pain in the ass. Mm. <clears throat> Spring Mountain. Um, you drive basically to the spine that's in the southwest of town. It's on your way out to Pahrump. There's a little town in the mountain called Spring Mountain, but there's a trail called Spring Mountain Trail, and that gets up to the mountains that are on the west side. Frenchman Peak, that's something you can do, uh, but that's that's just another view. I, I do Black Peak before I do Frenchman Peak, uh, and that's pretty vertical as well. But, yeah, that's what I would do. Non-stop Drake, two bucks. Great one. Can't be racist. He even likes the Atham. See, he claims not to like Jews. Black, well, he doesn't like anyone ain't white. <clears throat> he, okay, I got to refine it. He doesn't like anyone who isn't a straight white male. All right? 
But then he got an awful lot of friends who don't fit that that um, that uh, description. So I, uh, God, I don't know. I'm wondering if it's shtick, you know? Like he really isn't, but he just does it for shock, and he's really good at playing it. Uh, that that could be it. I don't know. Uh, Big George Costanza, two bucks. Will you get into pipe smoking? I might. I really had to back off on the tobacco. Uh, I was having some kind of like secondary effects. I'm like, yeah, this isn't. And I kind of, if I have my friends around, sure, it's fun and fine. But I was just smoking it because I was bored. And all I did was just go to the gym and hype more. Um, and just, there's not, especially the Vegas cigar lounge, the people there, they're not, they're not the regular. They all, it's all transitory. Vegas is a very, very transitory town. If you see someone two years in a row, you're lucky. <clears throat> PI, five bucks. How retarded is it? Becoming an accountant and later on in life, build a farm for subsistence living, asking for a friend. Not, not the, you make it sound like a mutually exclusive thing. How dumb is it that I play football and then I played basketball? Why can't you do both? Uh, there's, accounting could go online. I'm a podcaster, but I also have quasi subsistence living, a quasi off grid. Um, oh my God, he rides bikes and he eats pizza. Oh my God, he's crazy. That's fine. <laughs> it's not dumb at all. Water is not wet. Say it or else. Two bucks. See Canada and mass immigration. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I roll there for am. Take Canadian bucks. Homeowner in Canada, finished my mortgage last year. Awesome. But barely qualified for 20 years ago. <clears throat> I'm nowhere near qualified for a mortgage on my own house now. Look, I'll, I'll tell the poor, the poor young people again, the solution to one of the main things you it is within your power to do, aside from stop voting Democrat, shut down the border, and send all the illegal immigrants home. Okay. Aside from that, <clears throat> what you could do is you could become tradesmen. You can start building your own home. Now, there are other things coming along, like there's prefabrication technology that allows for like mini homes, but it's it's pre-assembled. And so the home is more affordable. So now it's just the land. Capitalism saved your ass on that one. Thank you, boys and girls. You could thank capital, just like your iPhones, you could thank capitalism for that. Um, yeah, there you can afford a home. It's just like, or live at home, save your money, work two jobs. You can afford a home. It's just becoming increasingly difficult. But one thing you could do is increase the supply of homes. Oh, but it's hot in the attic and I don't want to HVAC too bad. I think, I think it's time for a change. I say, let them take care of us. Well, well. let's get, let's them have, give us money. Probably shocks a guy like you. Ladies, why don't you pick up the slack for all the thousands of years men have built the home? Why don't you girls go build some houses? We'll, we'll go be kindergarten teachers. We'll go be social workers. La, 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 la. Oh, my goodness. You've killed how many people? Probation. He's cute. <clears throat> Nonstop trade two books. Why do you assume people grow up in nuclear families? I, what? I didn't, did I? When did I do? When did I assume that? Not stop, Dre. Two bucks, but isn't all hiking the same? It's just walking. Oh, Dre, Dre, of all the horrible jokes you've said about me, that that hurts. That digs deep. It is not just walking, sir. That is, there's uphill and there's paths and there's views. The views. I mean, being serious. Walking, you just walk into the same neighborhood. Uh, sidewalk. Oh, look, cars. Oh, my God. Is that a strip mall? Yay, the suburbs. Um, hiking, usually there's a destination. You get to a mountaintop, a uh, waterfall. Um, usually there's elevation. I don't know. I'm sure there's a debate about that. Like, if there's no elevation gain or, or, or decrease, is it hiking or is it just walking? It, it is, but, um, yes, it's not walking. Good, good Lord, sir. Justify Misagony, five bucks. Would have to commute two days a week and save an extra thousand bucks, but could save me so much money convincing boss to allow me to just two hours to avoid traffic. Do it. Do it, Justify. Do it. See, you, see, Justified has a mission. 
He has a goal. Not once have I heard Justify come in with the super game. I can't afford the house because you believe in Donald Trump and evil Republicans and then just the capitalists and, and BlackRock. He's hustling. He's moving. He's shaking. He's got a plan. I'd say you girls up with him, but I'm afraid he's not six foot two. Not stop, Dre. Uh, two bucks. Cappy like putting things in his mouth with friends. <laughs> no, that's Vince. That's Vince. Chuck the Painter, five uh, euros. Hey, Cappy, what would be the best way to deal with liquidity coming from a side hustle? Well, your side hustle, what do you mean liquidity? You're receiving, well, in your case, you're getting euros for your payment. You mean like to buy the assets to run a business? And so you're using all your cash up to buy like equipment or something? Uh, the way people would normally handle that is you go get a loan from a bank for an amount that would allow you to purchase the equipment you need or whatever, the computer. Um, <clears throat> but then you don't tap your own cash and then you can use your cash to run the operations of the firm as, you know, short-term expenses come up. Um, but yeah, I, I need to know what the side hustle is. Like if you decide, oh, I'm going to do a YouTube. Well, okay, well, there's, there's no investment cost in that. You don't, you're not going to have a liquidity problem. Are you saying like, I give up my daytime job to do a side hustle? What do I do without there? There's no money. You don't give up your daytime job. You work two full-time jobs. Two, 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 both, both. You got to view your daytime job and your side hustle like a blonde and a redhead that want to have a threesome with you. You don't say, do I choose the blonde or the redhead? You choose both. You choose both at the same time. And you, you deliver the extra performance. And then you have superior results. Fucking Beckloff. Like, oh, I had a threesome. I was like, it fell into your lap. <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of autistic millennial girls in their teens, probably doing drugs, and thought it was a good idea. But there's Beckloff with his smiling little face. All right, that's it. Link below, Bachelor Pad Economics, if you want to learn to get your financial shit together. I welcome comments below how you could explain to me the reason of rationalization for voting, voting against your bet. Is it just you want to be popular? God damn, did you want to be popular in your teens or 20s? You know, the college care. Why can't I afford a home? Congratulations. You were politically popular. You did the Democrat thing. Now you can't afford a house. I'll see you guys later, toodles.